Welcome back to the Conference Center and Global Specs Material Handling and Supply Chain Technology event. I'm Jim Brennan. In a typical manufacturing process, companies make or buy the components that go into their final products. The components are often stored randomly in containers and bins, and manufacturers need some way to retrieve those parts as they are required, a process known as bin picking. Usually, they end up using either expensive labor or dedicated tooling that sacrifices flexibility. In fact, bin picking has historically been a very challenging process to automate, but that is all changing. There are robotic systems available today that streamline the bin picking process and cut the cost while still maintaining the flexibility to deal with a variety of parts. These systems serve to increase productivity and reduce the need for manual repetitive work. It's a job that often includes monotonous, physically demanding tasks that can be harmful to the worker's health. Now, one of the key technologies that makes bin picking possible today is machine vision. It's a technology that's been evolving for many years and now boasts the capability of identifying and manipulating complex industrial components. Three-dimensional vision systems enable robots to determine part location and orientation in the bin. The parts are then picked up by a robot and properly placed where they're needed. Mechanical elements are also important in robotic bin picking. For example, slim arm and wrist assemblies enable the robots to work in small workspaces without interfering with other system equipment. Advances in servo motors and vibration control let the robots accelerate and decelerate rapidly, and that cuts the time needed to complete the bin picking tasks. Central control systems let multiple robots work together without getting in each other's way. Now, some robotic systems also offer the ability to perform value-adding tasks, such as deburring, deflashing, and labeling. And they can handle parts weighing as little as a few ounces to giant components of more than 400 pounds. Now, there are limitations to what you can do with robotics. Even though capabilities are rapidly improving, parts with easily recognizable geometries, such as cylindrical or circular shapes, are the best bet. And before I introduce our next speaker, I'd like to invite you to submit your questions at any point during this presentation by using the Enter Question and Submit button you'll find at the base of this video console. You can also download a copy of our presenter's PowerPoint presentation for easy reference and note-taking during the session. Simply click on the button labeled Download PPT. Now, our next speaker is here to tell us where the technology is going and how to determine what applications are appropriate for robotic picking and also how to implement such systems. Adil Shafi is president of Advenovation Incorporated. He's worked on more than 300 robotic system installations throughout the manufacturing industry. Adil, welcome to our Global Spec E event. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Jim, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's great to uh, be at Global Spec and to uh, present this uh, uh, technical presentation about material handling and supply chain technology with a focus on robotic bin picking. Um, I will be talking about how to implement bin picking in manufacturing settings. I would first of all like to acknowledge my teachers at Michigan Technological University um, and, uh, and the guidance they gave me to innovate a lot of solutions. So today um, I will walk through a procedural um, uh, approach and, and describe bin picking. First of all, uh, bin picking has been considered impossible to do for many years for a number of reasons. I will speak about them. Uh, then I'll, I'll talk about some of the enablers, techn technical enablers that have caused bin picking to become more and more feasible and in particular some good applications to show that um, are actually have been proven and are, are running out there. So, and then, for example, if you would like to implement bin picking in your manufacturing operation, I have a procedure that I'll go through about how to get started, how to take uh, individual part pictures, randomness pictures, and, and go through a sequence of steps to uh, qualify the application, uh, make sure it will work for you, and then to manage the project so that it's successful. Um, with that, let's first of all look at bin picking. Bin picking is the act of picking jumbled random parts in bins using machine vision and robots, and for a long time they've been considered impossible. But let's look back at what has been considered impossible in the past. Uh, before the uh, light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison, 
It was considered an impossible task. Many people had tried it, but Edison worked with many materials, many different types of uh, techniques, and eventually he triumphed and, and created the light bulb. And, and he actually said, I had to succeed because I ran out of things that could not succeed. Uh, so that was very telling that sometimes perseverance is the key to, to solving these impossible things. Today, if you look at a satellite image of the Earth, uh, there's lights everywhere on, on the planet. In a similar way, Sir Edmund Hillary uh, was the first person to climb Mount Everest. And for many decades before him, people had tried to do it and they thought it was impossible. But he looked at the key places on the mountain that were easier to traverse and using his experience and some of this analysis, he was able to do it. Now, hundreds of people climb Mount Everest every year. It's commonly joked that sometime soon we will have an escalator to be able to ride up without even climbing. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes the most impossible tasks uh, are, are, are possible. It just takes some perseverance and some insight to make these things possible. And after time, after the passage of time, uh, these things become, uh, are taken for granted. And that's exactly what I believe will happen to bin picking. So for example, let's look at a manufacturing setting. Uh, a generation ago, most welding was done by people. Now manual welding is questioned and rare. Likewise, uh, nine years ago, 3D vision was used to do auto racking. This picture at the bottom right shows a robot picking up automotive metal parts out of unrepeatable racks using 3D vision and a lot of times these racks are not repeatable and they do not have good color consistency and they're rusted. But now with these innovations, these solutions have become commonplace. Many companies are adopting them and that impossible task even 10 or 15 years ago has now become commonplace. So um, I, I believe bin picking will follow the same trend. Some solutions have already been running in production for over five years now. And I believe that within 10 to 15 years, uh, bin picking will become uh, quite universal. And as we have progressed through this, uh, people have written about the progress of bin picking. It began with Professor Horn at MIT um, a couple of decades ago. He wrote about the promise of bin picking and outlined some guidelines, but there, the technology was not quite there to, to do it. A good benchmark uh, for progress was a few years ago in the 2006 issue of uh, Automation World, which uh, wrote an article and it was entitled Vision Guided Robotics in Search of the Holy Grail. And it outlined several solutions that had been implemented in manufacturing production. And there were quotes from actual customers who talked about how these solutions had become viable, reliable, and dependable. And so there is uh, certainly a, uh, an increase in confidence that's, uh, that's uh, forming here for bin picking. Now, when we look at bin picking, um, the ease or difficulty of bin picking is typically driven by two, two things. Uh, if you look at the pictures on the left, you can see that uh, we can have different types of parts with the different levels of randomness. So the first thing to, to, to consider is the geometry of the part. Um, Objects like cylinders, objects that have holes uh, are usually um, easy to, to, to do for bin picking. But if you look at the piston heads at the upper left uh, picture, those are harder. So the, the two things that, that are important for uh, bin picking uh, assessment are the geometry of the part and the degree or severity of randomness of these parts and bins. Um, the first successful bin picking solutions have been in the automotive powertrain area. Uh, please know that robots have been prevalent in the automotive industry, typically driven by welding, and that's where most of the industrial robots have been for many years, although they're proliferating in other areas. Uh, and for bin picking, engine blocks tend to be very good candidates for bin picking, and that's because they're well machined, they're rich in geometry, and they don't vary too much in X, Y, Z, or yaw pitch roll. They're typically heavy, and you don't have a, a jumble of these things, uh, but you do have some skew and some tilt in the bins that they come in. Um, and also, from a labor standpoint, people are safe by being slow, and so the handling of this in a manual setting, a labor setting, is typically very expensive, and so there's always been a need to automate uh, handling of engine blocks. 
So some of the things that have propelled uh, bin picking's capabilities are, are as follows. Uh, first of all, uh, computational processing power. Uh, even uh, in the last 10 years, the amount of power that's packed in a simple PC has tremendously increased. And uh, we are able to compute more calculations and perform more complex mathematical operations in less time than ever before. And that's a key ingredient for bin picking because ultimately these solutions have to run in real time in manufacturing settings and time is of the essence. Secondly, vision recognition tools have been very important to bin picking. Um, in the past, even 10, 15 years ago, finding an edge in a scene was a challenging thing. But now vision recognition algorithms have improved dramatically. They've gone from surface texture types of analysis like correlation to now uh, feature-based geometry uh, recognition. And, and the nice thing about uh, feature-based or ge geometric pattern finding is that parts can uh, scale, parts can be slightly out of focus, parts can be uh, slightly occluded, and you can still recognize them. So there are some tremendous in, uh, advances in vision recognition tools. Thirdly, uh, mathematical algorithms have improved a lot, uh, and specifically in the 3D area. We are now seeing uh, more and more um, algorithms and better fusion of these combinatorial solutions uh, such as epipolar geometry, uh, stereo matching, LIDAR, range, time of flight, point cloud. All these technologies are, are basically tools that are enabling bin picking to become possible. Uh, another enabler is lighting. Lighting has always been uh, something that uh, challenges the implementation of vision solutions. Uh, the variation in lighting and reflections or hot spots or the absence of lighting always causes issues with parts, especially if they're not in a well fixtured position. And so there has been advances in, in lighting also. There's even a programmable light where uh, people can take pictures and if you don't get enough candidates or good pictures, you can change the gain and offset in real time and, and, uh, and affect light uh, differently to create um, new candidates to reduce shadows or to highlight parts that are maybe not so visible in a different set of settings. So flexible lighting has become a, a huge enabler for bin picking. Um, as we have progressed in the last 10 years, a lot of off-the-shelf components have become cheaper. Cameras, cables, lights, lenses are all becoming more of a commodity and, and we're getting better and better performance for less price and this is also a commercial enabler for bin picking. Uh, another ish, uh, enabler is, is gripper techniques. Grippers on robots ultimately pick up grippers, uh, parts, and so um, in, in that regard, grippers are very important. You can have suction cups or you can have parallel jaw grippers or even flexible grippers that kind of uh, sort of adapt to a part surface and lock in. Uh, so there's a lot of different types of gripping techniques. A lot of these innovations have come out of uh, NASA's uh, work in space to handle objects in space. And some of these innovations are, are being seen now in, um, 